You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Water consumption is going up. Water scarcity is becoming a global issue. And we need to learn how to more efficiently utilize the water. Hopefully, this problem is something that's closer to home. Let's have a look and see what it says. Water container. You're given n integers in an array such that its index represents its position on the x-axis and value represents the height of the line on the y-axis. What's the maximum possible area of water that can be contained between two lines? Note that the height of the water level is equal to the height of the smaller line. So if we have a look, our input is n and arr. n is the size of the array, arr is the array itself. If you want to solve it for yourself, make sure to pause the screen. And make sure to look at this explanation as well. If we have a look at this sample input, 5 is the length of the array, and the array is 1, 2, 5, 3, 3. This is how our graph is going to look. The first element has a length of 1, the next a length of 2, followed by 5, 3, and 3. The water level between any two elements, say the first two, has a width equal to the difference between the indices and a height equal to the minimum height. As you can see on your screen right here, that's going to be the water level between 1 and 2. If we look at the water level between the last two elements, this is going to be it. We need to maximize the area. We need to get the water level with the best possible area. And that is the water level between line 3 and line 5, between the third and the last line. As you can see on your screen, the height of this water level is 3 and its width is 2. So the total area it makes is 6. That's the best we can get. We can't get any result that's greater than this, which is why 6 is going to be our result. Now that we know what the question has to offer, let's try solving it by ourselves. Head on to the coding link below and come on back when you're ready. Let's just start with the rectangle with the greatest possible width. That will naturally be the rectangle between the first and the last line. As you can see on your screen right here, this will be the height of the water column between them. Now we know a rectangle's area is measured using its height and its width, width times height. We've got the greatest possible width. Now the only thing we can do is move further inwards. We can either move the right down by one or the left up by one. So what we need to answer is, which one do we move and when do we move it? We can also solve this using a brute force approach. Run a loop from one to five, run a second loop from i plus one to five again, and calculate every possible area. The maximum area wins. That's a good method, but it has a complexity of n squared. We want to bring it down to just n. So try to answer the two questions I've just posed and we'll get back to it really quick. All right, guys, we're back. Now, first, we're going to select the first and last line. We've got our maximum possible width. Now, which of these two lines are we going to choose? The shorter one, naturally. We'll move the shorter one up or down, depending on which one it is. In this case, the first line is shorter. So we're going to move it up until we encounter a line that's taller than it. Why? If we encounter a line that's shorter than it, it doesn't make sense taking that into consideration. This is because if both width and height decrease, naturally our area is going to decrease. So at least one of the two dimensions have to increase, which is why we're going to iterate until we find a line taller than it, which in this case is simply the next line. So we move our startup to the next line. Now we recalculate our area. Initially, our area was one times four, which was four. Now our area is two times three, that's six. Now again, we select the minimum element. Between start and end, the minimum element is start. So we move start up by one. The next line is again taller than start. So we simply move it up by one position. Now the area of the water column is again two times three, which is six. And now we'll notice end is the smaller one of the two. So we move end down by one. Recompute the area. This time it's simply three. So our maximum area remains unchanged. 
the moment start and end coincide they'll coincide on the tallest line the moment they coincide we end all our iterations and we return our max area let's try typing the code out for ourselves initially we have a start at 0 and then end at n minus 1 we are also going to store our max area which stores our greatest possible area initially that's zero now while our start is greater than end what we do is we need two components to calculate our area our width and our height our width which we'll call width is nothing but end minus start this is sorry this is while start is less than end our width is end minus start and our area is width times height what is height height is the minimum of arr of start and arr of end following this we have got to update our max area max area is nothing but the max of area and the old value that's max area so if the new area which we've just calculated is greater than the old value it gets updated now we got to figure out which element is lower is it start or is it end so if start that is arr of start is less than arr of end we are going to assign a pointer to start and we are going to say the direction is 1 we are going to be moving upwards else we are going to assign a pointer to end and say the direction is minus 1 let me just move this down so you get a better view now we run a while loop while first pointer should be in the range start to end put less than greater than or equal to and pointer should be greater than the next element if it is we're going to keep moving it point arr of pointer should be greater than arr of pointer plus d now if we are moving upwards that is if we start from start d is plus 1 so we are comparing it with the next element if we are starting from end we are comparing it with the previous element if this is true we simply update it to d now this will stop just shy of our greatest element so we need to update our pointer one more time following this we need to either move start or end to the pointer So if d is one, it means we've moved forward. So we've got to move start to our pointer. If that's not true, we've got to move end to our pointer. P T R. Finally, we simply return our max area. Let's see if this works. A sample test case has been passed. Once we hit submit, come on, come on. every test case has been accepted guys that's the solution to the problem water container i hope you liked it if you did make sure to leave your comments down below and make sure to hit the three golden buttons pleasure to solve this and i'll see you all next time